Dune Genetics. Hey, hello, Rutger. Hey, man. How are you doing? All right, all right, pretty good. Good to see you again in another video in our science series. And today we want to talk about one of the most beloved and acclaimed fantasy stories of all time. The planet is Arrakis, also known as Dune. And in our first video about Dune, we're going to talk about Dune and genetics because Dr. Utrevos here is a geneticist. I'm actually an evolutionary biologist. Whatever, I work whatever. at the Natural it's History Museum of the Netherlands. It's called Naturalis. Yes, yes we've Very been nice. collecting specimens for like 200 years. It's incredible. That is incredible. Yeah. <laughs> okay, right. but Dune. Dune is popular for many reasons. There's a lot of uh, exploring of the human psyche, there's politics, there's religion. And of course, the science. <laughs> Basically, there's like a religious social order, the Bene Gesserit, and they have been working for generations to produce specific people, offspring, in order for Leo Atreides and Jessica to produce a female heir, a daughter that will solve the political problems by marrying the heir to the rival house, Harkonnen, and then that child would be a special child, a Quisa Kadirak, a Zohai, a Jesus. A man will come, the Quisa Kadirak. He will go where we cannot. So it's a, it's a breeding program. It is, it is. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They're trying to produce a particular person, not just from the family lineage, but also with certain qualities. Right, and they're planning ahead. Yes. Right, they plan very far ahead, but <laughs> even though the Bene Gesserit order can see in the female line the thoughts and the feelings... <laughs> Go on. They cannot see the fact, they cannot foresee and be prescient to the fact that Jessica She's a pro-life person. Right. They probably didn't check out her Facebook posts, oh, I think. Yeah. They missed that part. So the Y chromosome snuck in there. Right. So yes. that, yeah. So she had a boy. Mm -hmm. She wanted to keep the boy. Paul Atreides, that fucked up the entire 1,000 year plan. Oh. Uh, if you know what you are trying to accomplish, and you know what you're working with as the raw material, and you have a good sense of genetics, you can kind of plan ahead to produce something by crossing this with this, and then that with that, and that, and that with that. And this has actually become quite advanced in the crop breeding as okay. well. Okay. Right, so if you have a couple of different ancestor plant cultivars, okay. you kind of know, okay, I want it to be both drought resistant, but also tolerant to salt or something, okay. then you know that you can actually calculate in which, in how many steps uh. you have to cross different things with each other. It's very sort of uh. algorithmic these it's days. It's not everything, put everything together. This is what, it's like it's baking. Step by step. Step by step by yeah, step. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So theoretically, I could have a bl blonde hair. Theoretically. Sure, sure, yeah, yeah, yeah. That's well, you could weird. bleach anyway. But, uh, <laughs> No, I want to do it the hard way. <laughs> okay. <laughs> That's weird. That's weird, I have to say. But there's like a political implication to this genetic breeding program. Right. There's a lot of examples uh, in history. Also, like in the Bible, there's like the house of David. Only they, only this line will bring the Messiah. Come in with the royal houses. Well, so there's, in, in royal families, there's been these sort of breeding programs just to keep things in the family. Right. Politically, Polit yeah. Yes, just put for political considerations. But that didn't necessarily lead to very functional human beings. Yes. So <laughs> it's, it's, it's the right surmise. Right. So, and, and sometimes it is taken to the extreme. I'm just like this uh, purity of blood. I'm well, yeah, so there's been this weird school of thought that there is such a thing as racial hygiene and that like certain groups of people should not reproduce um, right. and there's all, uh, all kinds of depressing examples of that of course and up until very recently actually that 
certain populations of native people in different countries were sterilized because, well, they're kind of socially not mm. really uh, useful. Mm. This is in some very advanced countries up until like the 60s, the 70s. Uh, and actually now in the World Cup in Russia, we're shooting it during the World Cup, but whatever, one of the Russian ministers, he urged <laughs> Russian women to procreate with the football players because that will, that, that will improve right. the Russian gene pool and whatever. So maybe he's also planning uh, for the football team for World Cup Ooh. 2048. Ivan Rakitic with the opportunity to strike the telling blow to end the Russian carnival. Rakitic and Russia dissolved into tears. So in the story, they're trying to accomplish a person with certain characteristics. Right. A vagina, yeah. firstly. <laughs> firstly, so they've already screwed up there. Yes. But aside from that, with other certain characteristics. There is a place terrifying to us, to women. The Kwisat Sadarak, he will go where we cannot. To get interesting new traits that you want. Okay you maybe have to mutate the DNA in such a way that these traits might appear, ah, right? You don't know in advance? You don't, you don't necessarily know in advance and th there's a lot of sort of trial and error as well. With that raw material of all sorts of screwed up genes, okay. do some crossing, do some cleaning up of the genome, just right. keep the parts that are interesting, get rid of the rest. Right. We have been doing that for ages, right? So With intuitively we've been doing that for ages, of course. We, uh, we liked the early wolf dogs that were not very hostile and we weren't so interested in the ones that bit the children, right? Yes. So <laughs> maybe not to have those procreate, right. but these ones. So yeah. over time, of course, there's some sort of, you know, selective breeding right. that gives us the kind of dogs that we like. And now we can really choose the specific genes and create all kind of weird dogs that weren't supposed to be there. An and abomination though, cute, but a cute abomination. Cute, but they kind of suffer as well, they some suffer. of these breeds. It's yes. kind of sad. The stated idea of all this is to make things better, try to solve a problem. And actually we've advanced much further now, okay, we uh, especially in the last couple of years, there's okay. been this real revolution of this new technique called CRISPR. CRISPR? Okay. Yes, it's based on actually a defense mechanism of bacteria which try to defend themselves against viruses that might damage their genome. And so uh, what these bacteria evolved was a kind of uh, class of proteins that can attach to the genome in very specific points and swap out anything that's in the middle. And so we've actually copied that technique and used these proteins okay, okay. to do what's called gene editing. So now we can very targeted make changes in the genome. For example, what do we do now? Uh, there's all sorts. Uh, it is actually so cheap that the graduate students can do it and play around with like the spots on the wings of butterflies. And let's see if we change this gene or that gene, does it look different? It's, it's completely like a lab uh, bench kind of technique that is, has been very uh, accessible very recently. Mm -hmm. So but the big fight animals, is now, though. yeah, animals, plants. So the big fight now is first of all, who gets the patent and who gets the Nobel Prize? No. So this is <laughs> Nobody cares about the animals. Yeah. Yeah. No, no, that's not so What about humans doing genetic engineering with humans, like more invasive stuff? We might want to. I mean, there's, there's certainly genetic diseases that might yep. be treatable very easily. I mean, a lot of other diseases have sort of a genetic basis, but it's so complicated that you can't easily just replace a little bit. Okay. But with some of them you can. And then of course the question is, okay, do we just want to use this to cure individual patients, like maybe with cystic fibrosis or something like that, and just in okay. the lung tissue? Or? Or actually something that becomes heritable, so we can actually wipe uh. out these diseases and improve our species, let's say. Oh, I think we do need some improvement. So, but that, I mean, of course that raises all, uh, all sorts of ethics questions, right? Uh, right. I mean, it's, it's not necessarily something that's going Obviously. to be accessible to anyone. Right. So they become some sort of breed of uh, superhumans yes. who have all these things fixed and, and uh, the rest of us uh, still need glasses and all that stuff. And then we have to kill them. That's probably <laughs> a good solution. <laughs> what happened with Paul when he drank the water of life. The bile from the newborn worms of Arrakis. 
I have heard of it. It is very dangerous. The Bene Gesserit sisterhood use it to see within. It's some kind of magic water, yada yada yada. Mm -hmm. He drank just a drop of it and he changed. Yep. Like he really changed. His psyche, his thinking, everything, like his character yeah. changed. Well, that is often with water of life, right? Like whiskey is water of life, vodka, and various other Vs. Yeah, that's, and, and you always change a little after a few sips. So <laughs> this is a common theme in the human experience. Right, and the, he almost dies also. That also that's happens. Also, that's <laughs> also, that's like that, that is the <laughs> flip side. So. But he's also like a stronger, stronger. He has like, m like better mind abilities and all that. There might be things such as performance enhancing drugs that improve okay. cognitive function, right. probably temporarily. Also maybe technology. Transhumanist kind of things with technology where, you know, somebody has a chip implanted and right. they can activate technology at a distance. Right, right. Yeah. But maybe the water of, of life didn't cr change him, just like create something out of nothing, maybe because of all the past generations of planning that, uh, that there was in his genetic makeup, maybe there was something dormant in him that's drinking the water of life, boom, woke up. Is that was uh, activated? Uh, yeah, somehow. that's scientifically viable. Of course, the expression of genes is always in an interaction with the environment. As we grow, all sorts of things are triggered by the environment, by what we eat, what we drink, what we learn. Father! Through his background, has acquired some sort of immunity or resistance or ability to actually uh, okay. metabolize the substance. Right, and not get killed like the And others. not get killed like the others. Right, because his mom is a Bene Gesserit. Yeah. Okay. I mean, that, so for example, there's uh, differences between people in the, the, their ability to break down the other waters of life, like <laughs> alcohol. Okay. Right, so some human populations have um, uh, the enzyme alcohol dehydrogenase, which breaks down booze. Okay. And others, other human populations have maybe not that enzyme to the same extent, and so but they you can can't train. You can train you on can, it. You can train a little bit, but uh, the, they might get more of a red flush. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are cheaper dates to take out, let's say. <laughs> so the water of life is a, uh, is a substance that's produced out of the bile of these worms. Okay. Right. Bile. Yeah, okay. bile is not a very nice substance. Yes. Uh, <sighs> uh, uh, you need a liver for that and uh, sort of the organs that okay. worms normally don't really have. Okay. So it's kind of creative license, but... Uh, okay, uh, so <laughs> they have chosen his genes, he drank something that changed something, but also there's a lot of training in it. Like he trains harder, hard even because before he does anything, just to train his mind and everything. What determines your abilities, like nature versus nurture, the debate that has been going on for ages? Nature versus nurture is kind of a bullshit debate. Is uh, it? Yeah, okay, in, in my view. Genes only ever come into expression and, and turn us into uh, humans in interaction with the environment. Okay. Right? And yes. conversely, our environment is also something that is a product of our genes, for example, the way we are raised, the way we are nursed, okay. uh, all, all that stuff. Right. So it's, it's a false dichotomy to say, oh, it's the nature versus nurture, right. like, okay. oh, this is purely uh, genetic and this is purely something acquired. The idea that there's these sort of immutable genetic characteristics in humans, that's kind of a Nazi idea, right? That's why I prefer! Not only Paul drank the water of life and was changed genetically in some way, when Jessica drank it, his mother, his sister in the womb, Alia, she also absorbed this poisonous, horrible water and she changed. Obviously, when a woman consumes something that is harmful for the baby, the baby changes genetically, right? Uh, like smoking or drinking. The baby doesn't necessarily change genetically, except, okay. of course, the substances influence which genes are expressed uh, in which order, okay. and that actually can lead to okay. you know, all sorts of birth defects. Okay, so we're ending on a good note. Healthy babies, happy mothers and fathers. Yes. Okay. 
So thank you for watching, everybody. I want to thank our patrons for making these series of videos possible. And you are also a patron. So yes. Thank you for that. And subscribe to get our science videos and hit the bell button if you want to get a notification whenever there's a new video. Uh, that's it. So I'll see you all next time. Bye, everybody. Bye.